Okay, today I want to go over the announcement that Google made yesterday that they are introducing Bard is now getting its biggest upgrade yet with Gemini Pro. So they're introducing Gemini Pro in Bard. I don't know why they have two separate names, but if you sign into your Bard account, so if you go to bard.google.com, you can get access there. I have access through my workspace. So basically through my workspace, I was able to turn on some of the experimental apps. This is considered an experimental app. So now I have access to Bard. If you haven't used Bard yet, it is a really good tool from what I've used it for so far. I haven't done a ton of different things with it. Um, I know there's people that use these for much more advanced things than I do. But I uh, just kind of want to go over the Gemini Pro and some of the reasons that you may want to try to test out Bard. It is completely free to use, so I'm not paying anything to use this. Um, it says uh, Gemini Pro is far more capable of things like understanding, summarizing, reasoning, coding, and planning. So you can try it out with text-based prompts. And it says they have support for other modalities coming soon. So they showed an introductory video. Their CEO posted it to Twitter, and I'm sure they have it on their website. And I think they posted it to the Gemini or the Bard Twitter as well. But if you go through the video here, we'll just click on the play button really quickly. And it says highlight some of their favorite interactions. So one of the things that they did is they actually showed somebody drawing a duck and it goes over and it goes over all these different things throughout. Um, they kind of use a Billy Madison joke there with the blue duck. But um, so they draw a duck says the duck is a type of waterfowl and the family, you know, so ducks are closely related to. But even as the person puts a piece of paper down, it shows, OK, I see you placing a piece of paper on the table. I don't know how well you can read that, but. I see a squiggly line. So it's able to kind of look at exactly what's happening. This is not available in Bard yet. So I don't know why they released the video where there's features that aren't available in Bard slash Gemini Pro, whatever they're going to call it. Uh, so if we come over here really quickly, one of the things that they did in their blog is they compared it to GPT-4. So Gemini Pro versus Chat GPT-4. And if we scroll down here, uh, what you're going to see is they look at all these different capabilities, general, reasoning, math, and code. And Bard actually, or Gemini Pro, ultra actually beat gpt4 so who knows how the, i mean they're going to continue to battle to see who can create the better language model so if we come over to bard really quickly i, w I would like to show you some of the new features but i haven't seen anything that's a major difference here uh, one of the things it says is that it's really good at reasoning so and it's really good at kind of understanding a prompt and giving a good response to it. So what is the best e-commerce strategy for Google Ads? Please offer details such as campaign types used, budget allocation, conversions to track, bidding strategies, keyword match types used, ad types I should use, how to test ads, and how to optimize my ads. So if we're looking for something like this, this is where it can be really helpful because if you think about going to Google and actually searching for e-commerce strategy for Google Ads, you may not necessarily get all of this information. And now we're also getting this directly from Google. So we'll see what Google has to say about using an actual Google ad strategy, but campaign types, shopping ads, what's interesting is they don't have performance max here. So you would think that they would have performance max since that's the product they continuously push. So they're showing shopping ads, search ads, display ads, and remarketing ads, things that performance max can all do. So that's interesting. Budget allocation, start small and experiment. I, I do recommend that. Prioritize high-performing campaigns. Consider seasonal trends. Conversions to track purchases. Add to cart, product page views, and signups. Uh, bidding strategies, target CPA, target return on ad spend. Maximize clicks would not rec recommend that necessarily. Keyword match types, reach a wider audience but risk irrelevant clicks. Um, surprise Google actually says that because they always recommend using broad match keywords. Ad types, so text ads, dynamic search ads, product shopping ads, dynamic remarketing ads, testing ads, A-B test different headlines, descriptions, and calls to action, use Google Ads experiments. So that's something I actually haven't used much, so maybe that's something I need to do. Uh, so give us some information there. Uh, the other thing I was going to do is we'll do a new chat, and we'll come over here with a different prompt. Okay, so I'm creating content related to Google Trends on my YouTube channel and on my blog. Can you suggest 20 different topics I can cover related to Google Trends? They'll help me grow the views on my YouTube channel and page views on my blog. I want to target the most popular keywords related to Google Trends so I can get the most video views and page views. Also, suggest how I can publish these videos to YouTube. Give me a strategy to maximize views and watch time. So let's see what it comes up with over here. Okay, so 20 Google Trends topics, so getting started, advanced Google Trends techniques. Uh, so these ones are actually pretty good. Case studies and applications, how I grew my YouTube channel using Google Trends, how I use Google Trends to launch a successful product. Five Google Trend hacks for marketers. So one of the things we can also do is just say this. Um, can you suggest five Google Trend hacks? Can you suggest the, and we'll say top five Google Trends hacks, see what they come up with. Uh, but if we come back up here, 
publishing on YouTube, optimize title and description, create eye-catching thumbnail, add end screens and cards to promote other videos. So they have, you know, some helpful information here. Pretty similar to what you're going to see with, uh, you know, ChatGPT if you're using that. I actually recently switched back to ChatGPT 3.5. With 4.0, I was having issues where I would, I would do prompts and it would basically say we can't do that we can't do that we can't do that so i had a couple issues doing that so i switched back over and i wasn't using dolly as much here so i figured why not just switch back to chat gpt 3.5 now i'm really interested in using bar just because i think google tends to create pretty good products for the most part for anything related to search uh so the last thing i wanted to do with a new chat was can you tell me and i wanted to see because ChatGPT4 gave me a really good answer to this. Uh, so let's see. Surfside PPC, a brand focus. This is actually really quick. Uh, education, management. Here's a breakdown of their offerings. Free PPC tutorials, online marketing courses. Looks like they're just pulling information directly from my blog. Google Ads management, campaign audit, and consultation. Based in the United States. Now let's see if they know this. Who is the owner of Surfside PPC? Okay, it's pretty interesting they're able to pull that up so quickly so oh, overall i mean i i truly like using bard um so far from what, how i've used it um i was using chat gpt4 but I'm, i was spending 20 dollars a month on it so the major difference with chat gpt4 and bard to me that i've seen um and i haven't used it for everything it's not like i've looked at advanced coding or anything like that that's where that's where people are way smarter than me i usually use these more for planning and research and i'll, I'll put in a ton of information and i found bard to be really useful and now i don't know whether to call it bard or gemini pro uh, i don't know why google names things different types uh, of brand names but bard has been updated in english with gemini pro and it says look out for bard advanced with gemini ultra so maybe that's something that's going to be a paid tool out of google who knows how they're going to do that um, i'm interested to see how google actually incorporates this into their search results because i think google is in a tough position because people want to still do SEO and people still want to do paid advertising. But if people can get really quick information like this directly from Bard, it's kind of like how often are people going to be going to different websites? This is why I've kind of focused a lot on video recently just because I think it's much easier – or much more difficult to actually create a helpful video than it is to create, you know, take information from a blog post. So there's a few different things we could do with Bard. I'll probably end up creating a couple extra videos. Um, one of the things I was interested in to see if they could help me fix my invalid traffic issues on YouTube. Uh, so can you help me fix my invalid traffic penalty on YouTube? Let's see what Bard has to say about this. They're probably just going to pull all the information from in the invalid traffic page on YouTube. I understand you're facing this. I can't directly fix the penalty. Um, possible causes, steps to resolve. You cannot appeal the decision, so that's something you can't do. Review your channel activity. I've done that. No suspicious activity. Identify the causes. Optimize your content. So who knows? Patience is key. Resolving a penalty can take time. <laughs> Thanks for the help. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of a figure. They wouldn't really be able to help me too much with that. So, um, it's interesting. Google continues to fix a lot of these issues. I've been dealing with an invalid traffic penalty on YouTube since July. Um, and obviously no fault of my own. It's not like I'm sending invalid traffic to my channel. I haven't changed anything. My YouTube channel just turned seven years old. Uh, so Surfside PPC has been around for seven years now and, I haven't ever dealt with this issue, and then in July now I have. So I don't know why it's happening, but you know who knows. Um, but if you're interested in using these different language models and you use ChatGPT currently, if you're paying twenty dollars a month for ChatGPT, I would recommend trying Bard. See if you like it. Um, it doesn't have the AI image generation capabilities of ChatGPT, uh, but it is a it is a good tool so far. Um, but I just want to go over that they have a big upgrade with Gemini Pro. So if you're somebody who is doing things that are a little bit more advanced especially things like coding, but it says really good at understanding, summarizing, reasoning, coding, and planning. I generally use these tools to summarize long articles, long PDFs. I don't use it as much for reasoning. I don't use it as much for coding. I do use it for planning. So understanding, summarizing, and planning is usually how I use it. Uh, the more advanced things are going to be reasoning and coding. I have used it for coding before, but nothing that's too advanced. So if you are interested, go to bard.google.com and get set up. Uh, so far, I really like using the tool. So just wanted to give you uh, that Gemini Pro is out. Um, so if you haven't used it yet, definitely use it and you know test some of the different prompts between Bard and with ChatGPT and see what gives you better information. So thank you for watching my video today and make sure you subscribe to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel.